My book, Lost in Math, was published two years ago, and this week the paperback edition will appear. I want to use this occasion to tell you why I wrote the book and what has happened since. In Lost in Math, I explain why I have become very worried about what is happening in the foundations of physics. What is happening, you ask? Well, nothing. We have not made progress for 40 years. The problems we are trying to solve today are the same problems we were trying to solve half a century ago. This worries me because if we do not make progress understanding nature on the most fundamental level, then scientific progress will eventually be reduced to working out details of applications of what we already know. This means that overall societal progress depends crucially on progress in the foundations of physics more so than on any other discipline. I know that a lot of scientists in other disciplines find that tremendously offensive, but if they object, all I have to do is remind them that without breakthroughs in the foundations of physics, there would be no transistors, no microchips, no hard disks, no computers, no Wi-Fi, no internet. There would be no artificial intelligence, no lasers, no magnetic resonance imaging, no electron microscopes, no digital cameras. Computer science would not exist, Modern medicine would not exist either because the imaging methods and tools for data analysis would never have been invented. In brief, without the work that physicists did 100 years ago, modern civilization as we know it today would not exist. I find it somewhat perplexing that so few people seem to realize how big of a problem it is that progress in the foundations of physics has stalled. Part of the reason, I think, is that physicists and the foundations themselves have been talking so much rubbish that people have come to believe foundational work is just philosophical speculation and has lost any relevance for technological progress. Indeed, I am afraid most of my colleagues now believe that themselves. It's wrong, needless to say. A better understanding of the theories that we currently use to make all these fancy devices will almost certainly lead to practical applications. Maybe not in five years or ten years, but more in 100 or 500 years, but eventually it will. So my book Lost in Math is an examination of what has gone wrong. As the subtitle says, the problem is that physicists rely on unscientific methods to develop new theories. These methods are variations of arguments from mathematical beauty, though many physicists are not aware that this is what they are doing. This problem has been particularly apparent when it comes to the belief that the Large Hadron Collider should see new fundamental particles besides the Higgs boson. The reason so many physicists believe this is that if it had happened, if the LHC would have found other new particles, then the theories would have been much more beautiful. I explained in my book why this argument is unscientific and why, therefore, we have no reason to think the LHC should see anything new besides the Higgs. And indeed, that's exactly what happened. Since the publication of my book, it has slowly sunk in with particle physicists that they were indeed wrong and that their methods did not work. They have largely given up using this particular argument from beauty that led to those wrong LHC predictions. That's good, of course, but it does not really solve the problem because they have not analyzed how it could have happened that they collectively, and we are talking here about thousands of people, believed in something that was so obviously unscientific. So this is where we stand today. The recognition that something is going wrong in the foundations of physics is spreading, but physicists still have not done anything to fix the problem. How can we even fix the problem? Well, I explain this in my book. The key is to have a look at what has historically worked. Where have breakthroughs come from in the foundations of physics? Historically, a lot of breakthroughs were driven by experimental discoveries, but the simple things have been done and new experiments now are so costly and take such a long time to build that coincidental discoveries have become incredibly unlikely. You do not just tinker around with a 27 km particle collider. This means we have to look at the other type of breakthrough where a theoretical prediction turned out to be correct. Think of Einstein and Dirac and of Higgs and the others who predicted the Higgs boson. What did these correct predictions have in common? 
they have in common that they were based on theoretical advances which resolved an inconsistency in the then existing theories. What I mean by inconsistency here is an internal logical disagreement. Therefore, the conclusion I draw from looking at the history of physics is that we should stop trying to make our theories prettier and instead focus on solving the real problems with these theories. Some of the inconsistencies in the current theories are the missing quantization of gravity, the measurement problem in quantum mechanics, some aspects of dark energy and dark matter, and some issues with quantum field theories. I don't think physicists have really understood what I told them, or maybe they don't want to understand it. Most of them claim there is no problem which is patently ridiculous because everyone who follows popular science news knows that they have been producing loads of nonsense predictions for decades and nothing ever panned out. Clearly, something is going wrong there. But what I have found very encouraging is the reaction of young physicists to the book Students and postdocs, they don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past and they are frequently asking for practical advice, which I am happy to give to the extent that I can. The young people give me hope that things will change eventually, though it might take some time. Lost in Math contains several interviews with key people in the field, Frank Wilczek, Steven Weinberg, John Francesco Giudice, who was head of the CERN theory division at the time, Garrett Lisi, George Ellis, Chad Orzel. So you will not only get to hear my opinion, but also that of others. If you haven't had a chance to read the hardcover, the paperback edition has just appeared, so check it out.